We are Mary and the Black Lamb, and you're watching Brutally Delicious with Bruce Moore. Yeah! Hey, welcome to Brutally Delicious. I'm Bruce Moore, and today we've got a killer show in store for you. Today we're going to be joined by a remote by the guys in Ashes of Abaddon. And if you stay tuned, we're going to see what they have cooked up for us today. Brutally Delicious! For those not familiar with the band Ashes of Abaddon, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? We are a four-piece band um, out of the Boise area. We started about 2000, late 2006, um, and then just kind of rolled on through to where we're at now. Uh, we incorporate a wide variety of metal influences in our, in our uh, songs. Um, we've heard everything from people classifying us as doom, thrash, uh, melodic death metal, death metal, uh, Am I missing anything? Uh, pretty pretty all metal. All I mean, we pretty much have a lot of different styles. I think that's where the appeal lies. I understand you're working on a new full-length release. How's that coming along, and when can we expect it? Well, the, the writing process took a long time, but we finally got a product I think we're all proud of. And, uh, it just released digitally, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, Slacker, what else? That's on like 30, 30 web pages. Pick yourself up a copy. That was on March 19th, uh, and hopefully we'll get some good results from that. What's your writing process like? Do you guys all write together? Or is it more the effort of one particular member of the band? Typically, with the band, we we come with our ideas individually and expand them per member from there. Uh, usually, it's uh, guitars come first, then drums and bass kind of work on something, and vocals are usually last. Uh, I think we all have our own way of playing, bring it to the band, and we kind of evolve it as as a song for the band rather than for one person. So it always, and in the end, we all love all the songs we play. Right. When you write, are you writing with a live setting in mind? Or is that not even an issue, you writing the song for the song's sake? I think ultimately the goal is, you know, you want to write something that when you take it live is going to be a crowd pleaser and a crowd favorite, but I can't honestly say that when I personally write something, I'm thinking, at, that far down the road, I, I want to write something that first and foremost I like and I enjoy and that kind of tells some sort of a, a story with either the music or the lyrics or that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if the rest of you guys feel the same way about that, but... Um, so I have to like it first before anyone else will. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing to know is we don't record things that we can't play live. Yeah. Oh yeah, our live show is every bit as good as our mm -hmm. album version. Yeah. Yeah. Or better. <laughs> I'd say live's better. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got the energy in the yeah. Do you have any rituals before you hit the stage? If so, what are they? <laughs> uh, there's a couple. I don't know. I always like to have a couple beers with Brett and yeah. Jesse before we always get on stage. But some things I do by myself, and some things I do with them. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> it's not too extreme, but. Figure out. I don't know, I think Derek just recently yeah. got over his no eating before a show. Yeah, that's superstition. True. I, was, I always have to eat. Super, yeah. Superstitious oh, yeah. before. I mean, even six hours before a show, I wouldn't touch anything yeah. to eat. The man would literally show. starve himself before a show. Yeah. And no, I don't know, I was what was the, the, the deal? Was it those dark brown potatoes that finally turned the corner for Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was. We, it's <laughs> all about food. We got catered a, a, a dinner at one show and it had some. Roasted potatoes or something. And I only took like five because I didn't want to push it, but those five little nuggets of potatoes that he turned the corner for. That's right. So. Times are tough these days. You guys have jobs when you're not touring, writing, recording. If so, what are they? I have a job every day. <laughs> yeah, we all we all work yeah. full time yeah. jobs. I mean, this is a it's a definitely a labor of love. Yeah. We're not we're not. Uh, we do it because we like it. We're not here. I think we're to, we're tens of thousands in the uh, red. Yeah, all right. So, uh, dedication right there. Maybe someday it'll pay off, but for the most part, we do it. We do it for the love of doing it. If you were a superhero, who would it be and why? Invisible Man. Blue Man? Mm -hmm. I don't want to stop time. Uh, 
Let's try and travel. I wonder what superhero actually does that. I bet you there is one. There's gotta be one, I just don't know. I'm not a big enough comic book. I'll make either of mine do that all. They're I'll make my own. Do you know? I don't know. The superhero that travels time? No. Santa Claus? Well, yeah, Jesus. Jesus. I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the ultimate superhero. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I keep going back and forth between the Hulk because I get to be super huge, green, smash stuff, and uh, you know. Fine. But then, you know, the tick, he's got his his comic charm, him and his Which little sidekick. The, the guy all dressed in the blue bodysuit, must go with the little antennas, and he's got the little sidekick. What does he do? Well. He just solves crimes and stuff. He doesn't have any powers? I don't want to be uh, perfect, he's, man. You know, he's yeah, just awesome. He's got powers. He's that's the tick. Yeah. What powers does a tick well, have? Well, you know, it's, it's that's his power, is not divulging his power. <laughs> so he, he has, has, has a power of secrecy, so he's I believe. <laughs> Power of secrecy. Also. It's intellect. He's just pretending. But he's really good at it, which makes him a superhero. Ah, he's super good at it. Yeah. Uh, I'd go with uh, Nightcrawler, because uh, it's a childhood favorite. He can teleport. He's just badass. I'd be the same. For Unless my, uh, Blade counts as a superhero. Sword and Down Vampires. Mm -hmm. Was comic book character count as a superhero? Abraham Lincoln. That too, I'd be hate. But I think it's W. Blade first. <laughs> yeah. I don't no, know. I think Lincoln was the president. Damn, he that's his cover story. That's his true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, he did did he there was a there was a vampire and a zombie. Oh, yeah. One better. One was better. very yeah, much better than that. <laughs> yeah. You were stranded on a deserted island to take three albums for the rest of your life. What would they be? Or no. Yeah. Lamb of God, Ashes of the Wake. Of the My all-time favorite album. Either Master of Puppets or Ride the Lightning Metallica would have to be one of my nominees. And since I would support both of those, I would take, I gotta go with three, Pantera, Vogue Display of Power, Downton All Album, and I would take the Sword and Warp Riders. So oh, are you yeah. in the that cuts it in Justice yeah. for All from there? It's uh, I liked Injustice for All, it still had a lot of uh, I'll take the old spirit album. to it. It didn't really start changing until my It hard to pick then. It's all in pink. But when they release the greatest hits album, you will have that. Yeah, album. that'll be the album. I'll take Hate Bridge's greatest hits. <laughs> See, I like the pile. Get on it. A burned CD <laughs> of all their greatest hits in my A road mix. There you go. Hate Bridge Road Mix. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer. I think a, a good one to mention then, if we're going to go here. I liked, um, what is it, Life Proof 101? Pantera? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that would be a good all, like, it's true. Covers a lot of bases. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good Pantera. Oh, my God. What's next for Ashes of Abaddon? Whatever happens, whatever happens, happens. Take it day by day. You don't really have a plan. You just make sure tomorrow will suck, hopefully. Just keep writing new music, playing new music, perfecting it, tweaking it, taking it live, going back and working off some more, and then we get enough songs ready, we cut another album. I mean, that's kind of where we're at. That's how everyone, I think, does it. Unless you're unrealistic. <laughs> um, yeah. Or already a signed band with that's your job. Sit there all day. Wouldn't that be nice? Sort of work. I dig it. I just want to get to the point where someone sets my drum set up. I go play, <laughs> get up, and they tear it down. I go like 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 find a recording, like. and there's a, a new guitar waiting for you. Yeah. Courtesy of whoever you know, ESP <laughs> or DC Rich. So I kind of like setting my stuff up. Yeah. But I don't like packing it. Yeah. yeah. So if someone could put my head and cab where I wanted it. And then plug in all the rest. I'll make a really awesome backpack, then we'd be good. Yeah. Like a framed cab head. <laughs> that wouldn't work for me. <laughs> Am I? Uh, we'd be retired in two yeah. years. Designers. Be back. There's a challenge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Backpackable drum rack. <laughs> Six piece shells. You need a stand leg. As you're walking. Isn't that marching band? Uh, you have 12 uh, symbols. I do. He has 12 symbols. Well, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got six strings. And you got six strings. That's twelve strings. Did I have a hard enough time with six? I don't know how to play twelve strings. I don't even use three of those at the same time. Two at a time. Yeah, Derek just does palm notes on the low string. I don't need a six string guitar. They don't offer a three string guitar. It's true. They have a four string ukulele. That's true. Or a violin. So now we're at my favorite part of the episode: the eating. And since we're doing this via remote, I can't join you, but I'm there in spirit. So if you want to take the camera, and I'll follow you into the kitchen. And we'll see what you got cooked up for us today. Keep. You can't have baked beans without bacon. That would just be unholy.
don't underestimate a good pair of scissors. Because this isn't the last you'll see of these babies. Oh, and I should also say I did wash my hands with soap and water. Uh, safety first, boys and girls. chop through. Now if you wanted to do this the authentic way you can grab your knives but um, I'm gonna use this little slicer dicer guy here and make a little bit faster work of stuff. And then we're gonna put, so, so what's gonna go in this pot? We've got three onions, four to six jalapeno peppers, which you can't see, oh, I guess you can kinda of see over here. And then we're gonna do probably three to six cloves of garlic, or it's lazy equivalent, which would be the minced garlic. So I'm just gonna put like, eh, a couple of tablespoons or similar to that. And then we're gonna pour a half a cup of whatever your favorite beer is. I typically go with the darker just because it'll add uh, a different color texture to the beans um, as well as there's going to be liquid smoke in it so uh, probably don't want to hit anything like a strawberry beer. My okay so this is one we're going with today. Uh, I'm not a beer drinker but it's from what everybody says it's awesome. Yeah. It's a uh, Made locally. locally made a Waihe Amber Ale from Beer Valley Brewing in Ontario, Oregon. Um, so we're gonna, I just ripped that off with my fingers. That was no prior preparation. I just tore through it like a, like a <laughs> and It's not even a twist off. And uh, roughly half a cup. Give or take. The cool thing is that it tenderizes the onions and is really, uh, adds a different flavor to it, which is something you don't find in a lot of baked bean recipes. So we're gonna, we're gonna cook these down until the onions are clear. Or just go back to stir. Um, so it's looking like the the onions are just soaking up the, the beer and the beer is adding flavor to the onions and vice versa and then the peppers are kicking the onions and the beer right in the ball, which is right where we want it. You can see all those jalapeno seeds floating around in there. Yeah baby. All right, so the next thing, we're gonna get uh, two thirds of a cup of molasses going here. See if I can't just dump this over. Uh, not only does it taste good, but it really gives a nice dark color. Right in the, the pot to wait for the game. So we'll take the molasses, right in the pot. Yeah, we'll cheat right now, it might be dead cut stuff. Okay. 
next thing is to take a half a cup of brown sugar, uh, which is already packed, and you can see it's a little bit more than a half a cup. That's all right, don't worry. You can't really go too wrong on the brown sugar. And this is gonna be one thick sludgy mix. So if you're a fan of sludge metal, right there it is. Okay, then we're gonna put two teaspoon, tablespoons rather of dry mustard or as best as we could. Maybe I'll just hold that over the top just in case. So there's one, and we'll just take a chance on overfilling. And then the next one is a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I'm not gonna really measure that, feel free if you want. I'm just gonna kinda sprinkle it on because um, I know we're gonna have some heat anyway from the jalapenos. So, rough guess is good. Then two teaspoons of liquid smoke. And then the last one, I, it says two tablespoons, uh, kind of what I wrote down, just my guess. I just kind of pour in some syrup just to give it, I mean, you can use maple if you want, if you want maple flavored beans. I'm just, it just looks like a big, thick mess of goo, uh, but it'll start breaking down. And it's essentially the same stuff that you would make a barbecue sauce out of anyway. I mean, the dried mustard and the, um, Molasses and brown sugar is all pretty key ingredients to barbecue sauce. Um, you can see how they're, the onions are clearing up, kind of getting a little translucent. Uh, that's the goal. That'll make them a lot more tender once we hit the bean mixture. In fact, I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Might even throw a touch more beer in that. Bueno. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take this bacon over here and you can drain it and wash it if you want. I'm actually just gonna scoop it out and leave, leave a little bit of the, the grease kind of clinging to it. And I'll empty out some of it for what I can. A little bit of that bacon grease goes a long way for flavor. Kind of like when you're camping and you fry up your eggs and your bacon grease. All right, so the next next thing is just to dump the, the uh, onion, pepper, garlic, beer mixture into the baked beans. I would eat that all by itself. In fact, I'm going to. Don't put that spoon back in there. <laughs> so the next thing is to, the last thing is to add the beans in. You want to just leave their natural packing water in there. I thought it was like uh, bean piss, but it's actually good stuff. Dude, how'd that brown one get in there? And then we yeah, what the heck? There's a brown one in there. Is there a brown one? Yeah, dude. Where'd it come from? Did you see it? We're not racist. Right there. You see it? Well, still, we how are not racist. I don't want it in there. Equal opportunity. <laughs> All right, it's the only brown so, one. That's a good spoon here. Oh, I don't know. It looks good. Good to me. I'm going to use this other And then we'll just kick that up on low, or we'll kick it up on high until stuff starts cooking. Um, and then I don't, you can cook that as long as you want. I mean, I've seriously, that little pot that I brewed up last night has been cooking since about 10 p.m. 
I just let it run all night on low. And wow. You can tell the difference in color between these beans and the final product of beans. Yeah. Um, we can cut to that too. Let's see. Or they'll so just the completely absorb versus. a dark color. This looks weird. Yeah. Get some of that sauce off the bottom. I could eat more bacon. <laughs> It could. We, in fact, one thing we talked about is throwing in some some chopped up smoked brats into it, so it has another thing of meat. You want to hit it? Should we do it? Do it. I've got the brats. Like, let's do it on the fly. Ooh. Doing it on the fly. This is the game changer right here. We're going to pack it. Uh, brats that we will again not plug a company that does not compensate us, but let's just say that it is made somewhere back, about Johnson's territory. I don't know. Somewhere. I don't know. The village of John. Jameson Some. Vila or something. So we'll chop those up. And the last thing is just loading up a whole bunch of cracked pepper on it. Uh, you won't need to put salt because we got the, the, the saltiness of the broths and the saltiness of the bacon, so it should be good without that, but uh, Pepper, do me right. It's, and uh, then we wait for the beans to cook in the crock pot for 6 to 36 hours. Game over. That's what, what is game over? That's game over. I won.